right. Okay, vámonos uh, pues. Here we go. Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 54 of the Lingaholics podcast. We are back today with an awesome guest, uh, someone whose videos we've been following on YouTube for quite a while, uh, someone who on Twitter is making language uh, insights and comments and sharing material. It's always cool to see. So this big online polyglot community, we just want to keep reaching out to as many people as possible. And today's guests agreed to come on. So we would like to welcome today Valeria Turina. Did I get yes. It? Sure. I got it. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. Is, okay. Okay. So Valeria from little, like the biograph, biograph, biographical facts I know about you. That's a Russian last name? Russian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. So, Ocho how are you today? Ocho okay. <laughs> okay. Marcus has dabbled a little with the Russian. So, uh, how are you today and where are you today, just for the listener? I'm pretty, go pretty good. <laughs> nice. Um, I'm currently in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, yeah, that, that's about it. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. And you, okay. All right. Before we get more biography, let's bring in the other podcasteros so senor sueco in toronto what's up today buddy well it, it's a it's a gloomy day here in uh, ontario day? yeah it's been raining all day i don't know how the weather is down in new york city but here it's been raining and gloomy all day so i've been i've been um, chilling out i watched um the first part of season five of la casa de papel which was very uh suspense very suspenseful very dramatic uh yeah. so that was a good time so i watched the two last episodes of that and had a Spanish class this morning. So I did that an hour of Spanish. And then after that, I mostly focused on French. That's usually for me, Valeria, um, the weekends, I mostly do languages. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I basically did languages all week. Unfortunately, I, I injured my knee playing soccer yesterday. So I like, okay. I have troubles like walking. It's fine. I didn't, tor I didn't tear anything. I don't think, but um, it kind of hurts. So I've been just chilling today. I'm not just being inside which is suitable with the gloomy weather so yeah, for that's sure. my update. I'm, glad, yeah. I'm glad the weather's not taunting you to go outside. yeah yeah exactly that would have been bad if it were like really nice out so make you take a take a rest and recover day now mm -hmm. yeah oh that little jingle in the back that's my dishwasher so sorry <laughs> cody how's it going dude yeah, well, I mean, um, not too much of an update for, from yesterday, but um, I guess if we're talking about the weather, things are great here. It's the, September in Seoul is lovely. It's like I think we talked about this on the mm -hmm. pod yesterday, but yeah, so the weather is pretty amazing, and took advantage of it um, with my girlfriend this weekend, and just went around to Han River, and we went uh, we went hiking actually uh, on Saturday with a friend of ours. So, um, yeah, that's basically what my weekends have been consisting of is just like hanging out with the girlfriend and like meeting up with like one or two other friends that we've made here. But obviously, because of the way things are with COVID here, like we like we're literally not allowed to meet up with people like the restrictions only during the day only allow for four people even outside to be together. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, things are pretty strict here, but uh, I'm hoping things will. I'm hoping all those restrictions are going to be getting lifted pretty soon because the vaccination rates are going up pretty fast now. Finally, so um, yeah, that's about it from my side. Cool, man. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, it's great to be spending time with the girlfriend. I'm sure she appreciates. <laughs> yes, she definitely does. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, who's your four then, Cody? So your girlfriend. And then do you, um, do you choose so, the other three? Like, you got to choose wisely? Or <laughs> yeah. Do you guys remember Do you guys remember that Airbnb that I stayed at when I first got yeah. to school? Yeah. Um, yeah, I made a couple, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I made uh, the Korean guy who lives there. All the other people left. All the other European people left. But uh, there's a Korean guy who still lives there. And uh, I hang out with him. And um, there's like uh, another friend of mine that I've that I've made here, and a friend of mine that I met in China actually. So an English teacher, like a coworker that I had in China, he also lives near Seoul, and so we've met up a few times um, since nice. since I got here, which has been super cool. And uh, yeah, that, that's about it though, because obviously 
there's no meetups happening or anything like that. So my social life here isn't really that great. And also when I go to work, I mean, um, this school is kind of like, it's a lot more isolated than my previous school. It's like everyone has their own individual room. So there's no real like socialization that happens other than socialization that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And it's like, ah, it's like, it's kind of like uh, not the greatest for, for me, but it's better than what I had in Kyoto. <laughs> at least I've got like some people to talk to. And, and uh, yeah, it's like after work, like there's nothing like, Hey, like, let's go do something on the weekend or Hey, let's do something after work. Like there's none of that. So it's, it feels a little bit isolated, but I think when things uh, lighten up with COVID, then the social life will start uh, improving a little bit. For sure. For sure. I still uh, relate to that note about the, uh, there's only like the communication that needs to happen. Like even with my coworkers, right? Like at my job, when you go to the office, like you just have the casual, like you walk by someone, compliment their shoes, start talking about like something, right? And then you'd have lunch together. But here it's like, Oh, if you want to talk to someone, you have to like schedule a time. Like, oh, hey, um, do you have time for thirty minutes to like chat, get to know? It? Like, that's so yeah, like, right. Of, inauthentic, you know? It's weird. So yeah. that's why I feel like I don't really know a lot of my coworkers that well mm -hmm. since I joined like this new company during COVID. So I was like a completely remotely onboarded person. Mm. That was very interesting. Okay. <laughs> Right. But we're finally starting to go back into the office a little bit. So, like, right. I go, as of September, I supposed to go, like, two times a week, Tuesday and Thursday. And that has been so nice to just, like, casually see people look over and be like, oh, hey, do you know how to do this thing? And they're like, oh, let me look, let me look at your computer. Like, oh, my God, yeah. it's so much better. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's a side note. <laughs> yeah, online online interaction does not replace face to face interaction at all. No. Yeah, no. I think this works pretty well though. Yeah, well, we have no choice. Podcast, yeah. podcast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyways, we never hear from Cody ever. So yeah. awesome. So Valeria, um, mm -hmm. for most of our guests, we just like to get uh, it's like a backstory with them particular like specifically with their their connection to languages it's such like a fingerprint kind of thing with each guest so unique and interesting and uh kind of their own backstory to why and how they come to speak the languages that they do and then ones that they're interested in speaking so just for our listeners if you can kind of give a kind of just like a your connection because that's how like we, got, we noticed you on youtube is like this your passion for languages so just sharing that story with us for sure. Um, I won't go too in depth into anything because I tend to ramble if I do. <laughs> so I'll keep it simple. We got no limit. Fine. We got no limit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So from the very beginning, I was born in Russia. And then when I was about three years old, my mom and I moved to the United States. And she and I continued to speak Russian at home and like with the rest of my family on that side. Uh, and then like, you know, going to school, living in the United States, of course, I just picked up English <laughs> as children do. Um, and my mom like really forced me to keep speaking Russian with her. I remember like a distinct moment where I was trying to speak English to her at home. I was, I don't know, cause like the vocabulary increases as you like talk to your peers, like, you know, go to school, whatever. So I was trying to ask her like, oh, like, do you want this? Or what do you think of this? And she just would not talk to me if I didn't say it in Russian, or if I at least didn't say, how do you say da 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 in Russian, right? Just like complete nothing. So <laughs> through that, I ended up like having to continue to speak Russian with her because that, I mean, otherwise I can't do anything. Um, and that's how it kind of like, kind of continued at home through a compulsory kind of way. Uh, until in fourth grade, um, I went back to Russia for like half a year to go to school there, which was actually like very important and integral to my whole experience with like the whole Russian language and culture side. Um, because that was like the first time, at least memorably and 
functionally that I was exposed to people my age who spoke mm -hmm. only Russian, you know, like right. I had a super motivation to be able to not just speak it like well and improve the vocabulary, but also like be cool <laughs> speaking it, you know? <laughs> <Right. Sounds laughs> Cause, like, <laughs> yeah. Cause uh -huh. like these, these kids, they would have all the slang that I didn't know. They would talk in like these different ways. They would include like English words in uh, their Russian. I'd be like, do you know what that right. means even? <laughs> it, it, it was funny. But yeah, so that was like a super pivotal moment where um, I really felt like Russian was very important to me and I didn't, you know, need any kind of persuasion really to like keep going with it properly. Uh, so yeah, and then alongside that time period uh, in school, I was actually outside of school. I started taking Italian a little bit because my good friend at the time, her mom really wanted her to like learn her heritage language, which is Italian, but uh, she didn't want to. She only wanted to if it was like a play date with me. <laughs> Okay. So I would just go like every like once a week to her house and her mom would just give us like these Italian lessons. And then I started going with her to like a formal after school Italian class, which was twice a week. So that was fun. I was doing that for some time. Then when I went to school, I chose to do French just because I didn't want an easy A, wanted to do something else. Thought it'd be fun to learn another one. And then in high school, I took also Latin, which I really mm. loved. I thought that was amazing. Such a cool language because yeah. uh, it was so complicated. And with the <laughs> cases, that was the first time I saw like a, another language that was almost similar to Russian in that way. Um, with the cases, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. The fact that, like, you know, you change every single word, kind of, yeah, the, the meaning, and you can rearrange the words in the sentence no matter which way, and the meaning is the same, similar yeah. to Russian. Oh, I okay. think it's so cool. Yeah, so many yeah. artistic things that you could do with that, which I love. But yeah, and I'm almost done. <laughs> no, no, no. And then, <laughs> I need time. Don't worry. Yeah, and then in um, in college. The first two years, there's no like foreign language requirement, especially because I had taken the AP exam for French. So I like satisfied that requirement. Um, but then something was missing. By the time like junior year came around, I was like, I'm missing this like language part. It's, it's you know, I don't feel the same without it. So I decided to take Chinese because I felt that if I don't take it now, I'm not going to be able to do that myself. <laughs> And I just want to like have proper teachers to learn all of the tones and all of that stuff while it's not like too late. I know it's not really ever too late, but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yeah, so that was really enjoyable. I really liked doing Chinese there. And then last summer I started trying to self-study Japanese, which is a whole big thing that, has its ups and downs. And that's my first time trying to self-study anything. And yeah, that's, that went on yeah. for way too long. No, <laughs> no, that's, that my, that that's my story uh, with languages, basically. The evolution, for sure. So, yeah. so I have a technical question, like a, a linguistic technical question. What are the cases in Latin? Like, What cases do you have? Oh my goodness. So there's like nominative, dative, genitive, Accusative and ablative. There might be another Ooh, ablative. one. Ablative. Because those are all the German ones plus ablative. Yeah. They don't have ablative. Oh, no. I never heard of ablative. Okay, okay so it's kind of like uh, that, right? it's kind of <laughs> like German. In the, right. Yeah, but that's yeah. interesting though. I didn't I because you don't have cases in well, technically what so how, how what changes based on the case in Latin? Uh it's like just I guess the mm, ending chunk mm -hmm. the ending of of like the, the noun word the, yeah. yeah of the mm -hmm. noun the adjective okay so it's right. like it's, it's like esperanto <laughs> it's like esperanto right. oh, yeah because like, you know I mean? in german you only you you change you, well you do change the endings on like adjectives and stuff mm -hmm. and 
and also yeah. the, the um what's it called again cody <laughs> the, the, article. that, the articles change obviously yeah. Um, yeah. but do the articles change in latin too based on on the case uh, does latin have articles or latin doesn't have articles i feel like they don't yeah do and my brief dabbles with with uh latin oh, yeah because you'd think that all the because all the romance languages have articles you'd think that latin had articles yeah oh okay layers well, gonna find it for us yeah, she, that's awesome here that's we go awesome. 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 <laughs> thank you for i feel awkward being our authority like, i feel like i feel I awkward feel that weird. this was like my uh first question after all that but i'm just curious you know no no oh wow that is Oh, Pulled out cool. the lap, that is, yeah. <laughs> this is the classic right there. Do they have? No, I yeah. don't think they have articles. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a, I forget, there's a book. It's called The Story of Spanish. It's the same authors also wrote a book called The Story of French. And they, because Latin, right, was once the Roman Empire took over and then that evolved to vulgar latin that's not vulgar in the sense of like uh gross or like mm -hmm. just like common latin yeah. and then i forget the exact moment like the 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 articles came about but then and then while the articles came about they started dropping the the cases too right because mm -hmm. doesn't doesn't latin kind of sound like italian yeah doesn't you know what it, i mean yeah yeah, is Italian the closest? Well, it's Italian, just the way it okay, sounds, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I, I watched a bunch of YouTube videos on people that speak both Italian and Latin, and then they compare mm -hmm. it, and it's, it's kind of it's kind of similar. Mm -hmm. Like the way it sounds. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so. I think if you, like, haven't studied either, you could easily mistake one for the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's actually oh, somebody okay. on YouTube who he, like, he's very good at Latin, and he, like, did a video or two just walking around italy like talking to it italians in latin and seeing oh, really? if they like understand right I forget what his name is but it was so funny like some people just got angry with him and he's like the only people the only person who speaks latin in italy is you <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny to watch and other people they were actually like trying to communicate and like be helpful but, yeah Quite interesting. So cool, I've got though. a question for you. Um, which city in Russia were you born in? Okay. Where, like, where is it located in Russia? Because Russia's <laughs> massive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How do I describe where that is? Like that black. is. See, the thing is that I mean, okay, so it's a little bit east of Moscow. Okay. Oh, okay. So you're about in, how much? You're in the right. European part. Yeah, it's about you're, nine you're not, hours east of. Moscow. You're not from. You're not from Vladivostok. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess the European chunk. I mean, I guess yeah. it's technically all Euro a European country. Which, I mean, okay. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> okay. I wonder, like, where. I don't know. I feel like if even if you're in that very eastern part of Russia, if you still consider yourself European or not. Because are, are there Ural Mountains? Yeah, yeah, but they're way west. Is that no? Sorry, oh, they're way west. east. They're way east. No, they're way east. Sorry, they're, east? Like, they're not yeah. as east as you would think. Like after the Ural Mountains, if you go east, there's a like I think most of Russia is still that way. Oh yeah, they're most, but it's still yeah. very east, right? Yeah, I think it's uh, something like maybe forty percent of Russia is west of the Urals, and sixty percent is east. Is isn't your Ur Uralstan like past Tatarstan, or the Ural Mountains past like past like Tatarstan? I think it's like uh, what's Tatarstan. Oh, oh, the stands there. Okay. The state because I have I have a buddy from Tatarstan. <laughs> right. Okay. So. Okay, so Larry, with your mom, kind of, like, how did you feel growing up when she, not not coercively, but, like, forcefully was, like, keeping you on track with Russia? Like, is that one of those things mm -hmm. where you kind of, like, begrudge it as a kid, but then are more appreciative later on? Or is it something you just, like, accept and do as she says? 
kind of thing? I think in the moment, it's kind of, it was annoying <laughs> just okay. because it's like, I want to communicate, but I have to constantly ask how to say the thing that I'm trying to say. Mm. It's kind of mm. like, imagine if I didn't speak, I don't know, if we were like doing this in French, right? And then I only right. speak English and I'm like, okay, uh, how do you say da 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 da? And then yeah. you tell me, and then I repeat exactly that. And then you tell me something else. And then the next thing I also have to say, like, how do I say right. this? Right. So it like, it's frustrating because it slows down and makes it hard to actually just do the conversation part. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's like helpful in the long run um and you know all that but yeah 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 okay. I, I didn't like have a grudge about it for very long because right. like i got used to it i learned all the words i needed to know <laughs> yeah, um, there yeah. weren't that many it's not like i would go into depth about like all the different things i was learning at school so like i do have a uh -huh. big difference between like my russian vocabulary and my english vocabulary Right. where like my english is like you know everything so it's like 100 percent of words pretty much that yeah. i know and can express they're like all in english and then like some subset of that is russian which does not include like technical jargon or like uh -huh. various emotional or like online specific things uh you know thing things like that so mm. right. it's kind of relegated to just what i would talk to my mom about that is what mm -hmm. <laughs> my Russian uh, vocabulary is. Yeah. No, that makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. Because like it's just based on your relationship, right? With your, mm -hmm. with your mom. Yeah. So how yeah. for how long did you feel frustrated or that sense of frustration with the Russian language? You know, it's interesting. I think it came and went in waves and it kind of evolved over time into a frustration on different things so it started out like in that uh, little vignette memory that i told you about as just like uh, i just want to talk to you in english because like you know that's easier for me right now mm -hmm. um to then going away and being fine and then coming back like when i went to school in russia for a little bit and then i couldn't like be as cool as the other kids who spoke russian like completely fluently and mm -hmm. with the times um, and there I was frustrated that like, oh, I can't like learn this modern youthful <laughs> Russian fast right. enough. I can't like fit in with them fully because I remember that hit me when I heard them referring to me as like, oh, the Valeria from America. Cause there was another girl uh -huh. in the class named Valeria. So sometimes uh -huh. they weren't sure which one they were referring to right. when they were just saying the by name. So, and I was like, oh, they're not just saying like, they're not going to say my last name or my middle name is how we do in Russia, but they said from America. So like, uh, I'm different in that right. way. Yeah. And okay. but then, but you, oh, sorry. sorry, I was just going to ask, but you don't have like an American accent when you speak Russian, do you? Or No. No. No, it, it's like if people who are Russian talk to me, they can't really tell at all until maybe... 30, 40 minutes into the conversation mm -hmm. when I either mm -hmm. start to get fatigued <laughs> or I can't like come up with the more complicated words that fit that conversation. Mm. That makes sense. Okay. So for keeping with your Russian, like nowadays, besides like relationship with family members, do you expand to you? Like do you read Dostoevsky or anything? Like, do you, or do you like, like, okay, okay. No, I just um, wonder, like, if like expanding for, upon what you had prior. Yeah, not not in that way. I think like okay. uh, the way that most recently I was kind of keeping up with it was I met this one girl on Twitter somehow. We both don't really understand how we met each other because. Um, <laughs> we had some kind of like tiny chat in twitter dms going i think it was like one time i tweeted about like oh i want a female friend and then she like responded to that and was like hey <laughs> are, you in, are you in the city um 
And so there was one day that I, it was like my last day in Seattle and she messages me and she's like, Hey, are you, I remember you said you were in Seattle. I'm here. I just came here today. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm leaving tomorrow. Let's meet up. Okay. <laughs> um, which was like crazy timing. Right. And so we met up and we walked around for like two hours, just like talking to each other. And she, she's a Russian girl. So she like only speaks Russian. I think she's like, learning Spanish and English now, but basically we just spoke Russian that whole time. And she mm -hmm. told me, that's how I can tell you these insights that like other people don't think I have an English accent that like, mm -hmm. it's after this amount of time that people can tell mm -hmm. X, Y, Z, because yeah. that's what she told me. Cause I right. asked her like, Oh, what do you think about blah, blah, blah. So, uh -huh. yeah. And then when I moved back to New York, she moved back here also as like a she was like kind of visiting a couple different cities in the u.s so she was here also and i met up with her a couple times here so that was nice but now she lives in spain so okay. i don't see her anymore uh, I'm a new <laughs> Russian person. you, you have to go to spain to. i yeah, have yeah. to go to spain <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> valeria have you learned spanish at all i have not no, no. okay uh, if you got French and Italian, it's yeah, that'll be easy. Breeze. Yeah, Breeze. walk in the park. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't know. It's just never happened for me for some reason. Right. So. Yeah. Well, there's only so many languages you can learn, even if you're a polyglot, right? That's yeah. the that's the eternal dilemma. Yeah. Honestly, like I even feel like I can't really keep up with all the ones that I have studied. Like I've kind of. Yeah. yeah. Decided I've given up on Italian. I probably am not going to return to Latin. I think even if I have fond memories of it and I know I enjoy it, I just know I don't have time to mm -hmm. devote to all of that, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, at the moment, I've definitely just like accepted that with the time I have, with the priorities, priorities that I have at the moment. I can only devote time to one language. Okay. To do. One at a time. Yeah. So so yeah. so how do you go about that? Like how do you um study and practice languages? Uh so it's definitely been different for all of them until Japan. I mean, actually it's been all the same for all of them pretty much until Japanese. Like all of them have been in a classroom based environment you know all of the non-native languages of mine those have all been like you know a teacher teaches you you get homework do the homework you know all of that <laughs> but then with japanese like oh my god i feel like i've tried every single thing possible <laughs> in trying to figure out like what works for me and that has been interesting i think ultimately what works for me seems to just keep changing which is really annoying because i keep having to like figure out what that is <laughs> right, um yeah. and at the moment the thing that is working for me <laughs> which is the most like unlikely thing that you would think it's this super old nintendo ds game called my japanese coach whoa okay you didn't What's see that, that coming <laughs> no no no, <laughs> no did not but yeah, so that is what has recently been like the most motivating and fun thing for me to use as actually like a semi-primary resource. Great. The other primary resource is like just a textbook that I have that, you know, I follow along. Okay. When the game tells me like, oh, this various grammar or like this thing, I'll also read about it in the textbook to get like more <laughs> exposure. But yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's super interesting because we were actually just talking about this yesterday. Like, I've been having the same problem with uh, with Korean mm -hmm. because I learned uh, four languages to relative fluency, mm -hmm. um, like French, German, Spanish, and then Chinese, mm -hmm. using all very very similar methods to you. And then now I've hit Korean, and I'm just like, I'm finding these methods aren't working, and yeah. like I got to change up the what do you call them? I got to change up the tools methodology in my, in my toolbox. Yeah, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. But Valera, Valera, you have to tell us about this Nintendo DS. Yeah. Game. Okay, yeah, gamer. Yeah. I'm an ignorant gamer. Which one, which console's DS again? DS is the one you flip up and you have two screens. It's like the Game Boy where you flip up and then you have two Game Boy screens. That's, that's DS. Gotcha. That thing. Ah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> right. So it's yeah. called My Japanese Coach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one sec. I'll show you. Okay. All right, folks. We're gonna for those watching on YouTube. This is awesome. This is gonna, this is original. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've fascinating. Okay. Here My Japanese. So is the is the intention of the game to teach Japanese then, or is it just the mm-hmm. adventure? Yeah. No. It, so on the back, I'll read you what it says on the back. Okay. Learn Japanese. Okay. This is like the kind of stuff that language Twitter would like criticize <laughs> the hell out of, but we're ah, <laughs> out there right now. The <laughs> we're here. Yeah, so it says, here. learn Japanese in only 15 minutes a day. Easy to learn, fun to play. Entertaining games help you learn Japanese words, grammar, and sentence structure while keeping track of your progress. Explore Japan as each new point of interest expands your vocabulary. Um, so is it like Duolingo on steroids? It's kind of similar, honestly, to Duolingo, but I don't know. For some reason, I like it better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't explain why. Like, there's just, I feel like it explains at least like grammar stuff a lot more, and the sentences aren't like strange. <laughs> right. You know, like some of them are. In like some of the mini games, but um, I don't know. It's like so. In okay, m- small sidetrack story about Japanese, but like the various things that I've tried to learn it in the past since like August 2020, when I unofficially started, mm-hmm. was I tried simply following a textbook by myself. Does not work. Right. I tried following this textbook along with Tokini Andy's like videos. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. Uh, He's great, by the way. And that worked for like a week. And then I felt really lonely and I was like, that doesn't work. (laughs) Then I was able to like sit in on um, a college class of Japanese like 100. That worked super well for a couple months for like one semester. Except that, like, towards the end, it got to be, like, too much with, like, my work schedule and everything. Um, I couldn't mm. keep up with all the things. Mm-hmm. So I ended up, like, not understanding verbs at all. Mm. I couldn't, un- I just did not know what was happening. There was, like, I just didn't even want to go to, like, the classes because every exercise, I was like, what is going on? And I right. couldn't really ask questions because I was just sitting in. So, right. it, you know. And then I tried like an italki lesson, Uh which went okay. It was like, it was nice, but I felt like I only 50% semi understood the verb stuff. Played this game, understood the verb stuff. Really? Uh Just clicked. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, I don't know. I, after a couple of different explanations, for some reason, the one in this game just like made sense i don't know i think like i had seen it a number of times so i guess like the pattern was in my head i was just like i don't get it i know this and this and this i can't replicate it like like i don't know how to explain it any better than that but yeah i think you just have to try out all the different resources until you find the one that works for you because like different things work for different people there's no like you know one thing but yeah, <laughs> oh, that's a really funny tidbit. <laughs> so what, what does a typical level look like? Are you just wondering? Yeah, like what do you? Yeah, like what do you? What do you do? do? What's a mission? <laughs> like, <laughs> what's like if I was turning on the first time? What would happen? Well, so you turn on the first time, uh, you go through like a little, mm, what is it? Like level assessment, I guess, oh, like a little speed uh, quiz. Yeah. Honestly, it was super stupid. Like it was the worst placement test i've ever seen because half of the words were like sushi samurai like it was like wow even if you don't speak japanese you will know this one you got those ones yeah yeah yeah. so i was like why did they even put these in but anyway yeah yeah, so you do that placement test they like 
you know, skip a couple things for you. Um, and then they, there's like grammar sections. There's just straight up vocabulary levels where the first part is like a mini lecture by this little teacher person. Mm -hmm. um, so there's like an avatar over here and then there's like all the information here and on the bottom screen. Uh, yeah, I'm not doing this explanation very well, no. but <laughs> basically yeah. you have like a little lecture part yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. Uh -huh. Then she forces you to do a couple of games to like reinforce some of those things. Then you do a little part two of that lecture section. And then she's like, okay, before moving on to the next lecture, you have uh -huh. to like gain enough points for all of these various words and grammar stuff mm -hmm. through the mini games. Gotcha. Okay. And then you find it's like very well organized, like pedagogically, or it's, or it's you're just, you're hooked to it. Like you're interested. So you just keep I going. Know. I think my main yeah. interest is just like coming from my nostalgia towards old game consoles at um, the moment <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that like i just really want to like play with this thing and if i want to play with it then i might as well do something else that i also want to do yeah compatible with that time. so yeah that was like so my self-hack so is this game only for like beginners like a 182 or does it go into like intermediate stuff as well or what would you say i'm not like super far along with it because i've been trying i'm like a completionist gamer mm. <laughs> so okay. like i, I like am word. the kind of person i will do all the side quests i need to make sure i know everything like down pat before proceeding um so yeah. i'm like still working on going back and like studying all the vocab that i may have missed because oh my god vocab is my nemesis i hate studying vocab <laughs> but I don't know what level it ultimately goes up to, but I would say it's just kind of beginner. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But Thinking. so so in like your general language playbook, um, mm -hmm. what do you do when you like traverse into like the intermediate step? Like how do you how do you usually change up your your um practicing routine or learning routine? I think at that point my favorite thing to do is like reading. Mm -hmm. Like any kind of stuff that I can read without stopping too many times mm -hmm. right. is like my favorite place to be. So like okay. for Chinese, what I did was um, I had found like a couple of graded readers that were very pleasant to read. And it was like the there were some where the vocabulary, uh, it's like listed at the very bottom of the page the first time you see it. So it, it, you don't have to like go look in the back of like a glossary or like pull out your phone and like look it up. Right. Um, and then it's placed. They're, they're like written in a particular way such that the first time you see that, you'll see it again pretty soon. And then again, mm. it's almost like a SRS kind of style. Yeah. Like in reading okay. the book, you know? Yeah. So it's like a very natural way of learning these new words both right. in context yes. and with like yes. repetition. So uh -huh. that's like my favorite. That's... I think I used to use those same books that you're talking about. Really? <laughs> yeah, be because you used the term graded reader. I was like, yeah, it said like the title is like Chinese graded reader one to six, right? Uh, or something like that. I have like two different kinds. There's one that's like, it has the blue kind of title uh, and there's like one that's about Sherlock Holmes. It's like really thin. And then there's another one that maybe is the one you're talking about that are thicker books. And they usually say like, oh, 1,000 words. Yeah, yeah, those like, ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And they're, compo to... they're composed of like short stories and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. A... So that, and they come with those little like bookmark kind of things that have yeah. like lines in them so you can only read yeah the, the yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right yeah 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 that's cool mm -hmm. that's yeah, those, are, those are good too that sounds like a way uh more useful srs type of system because like 
I'm a memorize addict. Like mm. I need to go to therapy for it. And uh, <laughs> um, like it would be way though. more productive if I was like seeing these words. Well, I've gotten better. I've kind of like cut out just individual words now. It's more like based in phrases. But even then, it'd be better if it was like Sherlock Holmes or uh, like mm -hmm. uh, 80,000 Yards to the Sea or whatever that book's called. Like just like those classic stories kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. and I think more and more languages are coming out because I know Mark from Language Come Up. I know he's got, he always on Twitter has got ones for Russian too. Mm -hmm. So, um, did you just like Google? Chinese readers or how like Cody like how'd you find these books I just googled them yeah okay I think a, yeah. I think a friend gave them to me right yeah because yeah. because I remember when I did Ukrainian I found like old fables and stories mm -hmm. like they were meant for kids clearly but they weren't meant for language learners so you had to like you kind of had to for like make it a language learning resource but i do this graded reader resource where it's like okay this is meant for a language like we're not going to use more words than we have to to be at this level kind of thing. Mm -hmm. okay you know what now you mentioned like children's material like i know a bunch of language like uh polyglots always say that like learning through children's material is like one of the best ways to go but that's something i'll just I'll never get on board with that because, like, I'm not gonna sit there for an hour and watch a kids show. Like, watch Paw Patrol in Korean. Like, it's just not something I'm gonna do with my time. <laughs> like, I, I don't watch... care how effective it is. I watched all like the Disney movies in Spanish. I've done that. Well, yeah. uh, Disney movies is di that's a little different, but like, because there's a lot of like adult humor in Disney movies too. But like <laughs> stuff that's like specifically right. for kids. Like, I'm not gonna watch Barney in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> but dude come on might be might be useful though yeah, yeah yeah i don't know i honestly i feel like i could be biased but at least like russian cartoons that were made for children i think that they're like objectively better than okay. american cartoons made for children like hmm. i as you know what, what am i 24 i still enjoy watching those and really? oh, I don't even okay. think it's like nostalgia necessary. I mean, it could po partially be that, but like they're just really well made. The art is like still looks cute and like nice, you know. Right. But when I look back at like I don't know, not not identical, but like equivalent, I guess. American age, uh, uh -huh. cartoons in America. I'm like, ew, <laughs> I don't okay. like that. <laughs> So I don't know. Right. I, I think it's also like what age group for of kids is this like meant for? Because if it's meant for like two to three years old, like yeah, I'd want to shoot myself too. <laughs> right. But like yeah. if it's made for I don't know seven, eight, that might already be better. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I don't know. I agree. Like I feel like the vocabulary even in some of those could be tricky for if you're trying to learn the language and you don't know that many words because it's probably going to include things that you just wouldn't come across otherwise like right words like fairies or uh -huh. like the legend of whatever <laughs> or, like, yeah there's also a lot of like really useless words right. in, in in kids shows and books and stuff like that for sure like literary yeah yeah or like stuff that like only kids would use and like, mm -hmm. unless you have kids, like, why would you need to learn stuff like that, right? Yeah, I've, I've just always heard as an argument because, like, instead of just jumping into an adult movie where the vocab is going to be, you know, way higher than maybe your beginner level that, you know, a kid show, like, for just for, like, comprehensible input reasons. But you still need to have, like, interest, well, yeah, like we were saying, I guess it depends on the kids show. Like, I, like I'm, I'm not gonna watch Barney, but maybe I would watch Zabumafu or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. depends. Yeah. Um, okay, but I have a question about. Okay, we just a few episodes ago we talked about we were referencing this other uh, Russian podcast where who talked about how intense schooling is. In Russian, mm. even at a very young age, like okay. lots of 
like very studious need to memorize like poems and like yeah. it's just it's just a lot more rigorous say than say you might find like north american schooling system so was that your experience is that true like is it like I mean, that kind of granted i did only go to school there officially for like four months <laughs> right okay i know but... it's a short window short window yeah. yeah 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 but even then it was like a little bit shocking um to see how stark the difference was like first of all one of the main differences i would say between the schooling is that um like in america you do or at least in my school that i went to in america you do like one kind of I have to describe this in a way that makes sense. It's like you take like one science per year, for example. Like you will only take chemistry right. that year. Uh -huh. Next year, you're not going to repeat chemistry. You're done with chemistry for the rest of like, you know, the school, right? Yeah. Next year, you take biology. But there, it's like you take every subject all at once, but it's like you have a different schedule for them every year. And each year, it like progresses the level that you learn like, the next stuff about that topic mm, that okay sense. so it's always right. like all encompassing yeah it's like you're always mm. like doing all the things at least that's what i understood from the school that i had gone to that was how they did it um uh -huh. but also yeah um like i don't know if that's partially why but all of like the stuff was a lot more advanced like the math that i was doing there it was like the year after what I was doing uh -huh. in um, my American school. So like mm -hmm. I was very ahead in math for a little bit after coming back because I just like learned all the stuff. And also right. the way we do division is like with a, a table like that as opposed yeah. to... Long division? Uh-huh. Like you don't do long uh, division or you no, do long division? We do. It's just like the, the way that the table is is different. Oh. You make like uh, a, a, a T on the side as opposed to an l on the side anyway, oh, that's like okay. so not yeah. Important. yeah 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 just the but, representation yeah but i yeah. but i heard that they make you read like Dostoevsky in like middle school <laughs> uh, or, or pushkin or, that, or something I don't know. yeah Probably. well we did have to memorize poems that was a thing and you also okay. get cold calls all the time you have to stand up when you answer a question or you have to like go to the front of the room Oh. Every time the teacher comes in, oh. you have to stand up, greet them, sit back down. Oh, wow. Um, you, I'm pretty sure there were, like, times that you had to, like, like clean up the classroom. Like, that wasn't the janitor's job. That was, like, the, the student's People's job. Mm. Um, you know, you had to wear a uniform. <laughs> which, uh, okay. I, like, enjoyed but also hated. <laughs> right. Um, Wow. How is your uh, knowledge of the Cyrillic alphabet and like writing and stuff? Are you perfectly capable of writing in Russian? Yeah, yeah, in Cyrillic. Yeah. I, I just what don't like it? my handwriting. I oh, there, can you do the handwriting it. Cyrillic too? Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow, that's yeah. That's I got Cyrillic down, but the handwriting was like, oh jeez, I'm yeah, bad at handwriting. Uh, reading other people's handwriting, that is still hard. But yeah, okay, I don't know if you okay. can see. This I was just writing like song lyrics the other day. Ah, uh, okay. So That's in Cyrillic. Yeah. For the audio Person. listeners. Yeah. Okay. It's. Yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to see. Yeah. Well, that's and that's how that's the proper way to do it, right? Like, is it proper to print Cyrillic? Like, should it always be? Pretty written? much, no one does that. It's like just right. way too slow because. Yeah. Yeah. It's like too many strokes, I guess. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I so I remember like when I was doing Ukrainian, like I was like, I'm not doing this handwriting. I hate handwriting. So <laughs> I was like printing it out. And like, I was like, I'm mm -hmm. done. Like, this is the only way I'm like, good for me to represent it. But like the proper way, I'm like, nah, I ain't doing this. So, <laughs> so okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So have you, if any other Slavic languages kind of caught your eye, because we talk on this show, we talk about it's Richard Simcott's theory, like a anchor language, where mm -hmm. if you're strong in one language of a language family, then you can like branch off more naturally to another one. So right, are there any right. other Slavic ones that, mm -hmm. like for the future or, or that you've looked at previously? I mean, I did have like 
a brief interest with like Polish, I guess, just okay. because um, like in Brooklyn, there is this area that's like very Polish. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's called like literally Little Poland. But okay. and then they sell like a bunch of like stuff here that, I mean, it's Polish, but it's very similar to Russian things. Right, right. So like I really like shopping here for stuff uh -huh. because it, it's like it reminds me of the Russian food that I like. Um, but it's just funny. Like I will walk into like a Polish bakery and then they greet me in Polish and I'm like, uh, hello. <laughs> 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 I'm like, damn it. Sorry, I can't speak Polish. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's like when I hear them speaking amongst each other, it's super weird. It's like I feel like I should be able to understand it because it sounds so similar to Russian, but I just can't. Right. And so I keep okay. trying to like all my brain keeps trying to like parse it to understand it, but it just doesn't. It and is because there's some words that are just they sound like they are literally Russian. Oh so, yeah, yeah. So yeah, okay. that's interesting, but. Yeah. I don't think I'll end up learning it. <laughs> no, no, no. Just even uh, being able to encounter it. It's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Blair, so I don't know. Oh, go ahead, Marcus. I was going to ask if you've done any other type of traveling or um, done any other type of like uh, immersive environment for language learning. Uh, yeah. Um, I technically, from June 2020, to January 2021, I was living with my uh, fiance's family who are all Chinese speaking. Mm -hmm. So like within that home, within that home, I always mm -hmm. heard Chinese all the time. Right. <laughs> but okay. uh, so that like actually did wonders for my listening because like they all speak in like, well, some of them speak in like a more standard accent, I guess, and others, not so much and sometimes there's like shanghainese going on in there too right. but yeah i i just remember like at first when i moved in i couldn't really understand them that much because it was either too fast or i just had to like think too much and then towards the end i realized that like oh i have no trouble like picking out everything that you're saying like sometimes i don't understand what you're saying but i can like repeat i can you know yeah i hear um, it properly so okay i guess that is the most recent immersive experience that i've had hmm. but yeah and you feel like it helped a lot like you improved mm -hmm. a lot yeah i mean i guess the problem is that i was like too shy and didn't really speak to them at all and didn't take advantage of that opportunity i only spoke to them in english um but yeah otherwise for listening for sure and like just for various vocabulary because sometimes like i just hear them say something and i'd hear them say it so many times the repetition I just, I finally like yeah. look it up and i'm like oh that's <laughs> yeah. what that means and then I, I like piece it right back into all those other contexts that i'm like that makes sense now right right so like in retrospect that. kind of thing yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> okay yeah that's interesting yeah because do you find at least when I went to Ukraine, I met my long lost Ukrainian family members. I found some like a lot easier to understand than mm -hmm. others. Like I know we're like we're all speaking Ukrainian here, but some of us just like, oh thank you. Like it's clear, but the other <laughs> ones I was like, mm -hmm. come again? Like uh so do you, I don't that, that's like any language basically, it just depends on the speaker. Like uh so yeah, yeah, I okay. think so. Cause like I mean I have trouble understanding some English speakers, honestly. Right. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those Canadians, eh? <laughs> Can't understand them. <laughs> no, I, I actually, like, last year, I remember there was a time I got really somehow, like, sucked into watching a lot of Canadian YouTubers in particular. And then oh, I started, yeah. like, pronouncing certain words in, like, a Canadian way. Like a boat? <laughs> no, like or, uh, sorry instead of sorry. Sorry there, bud. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, or wait, like, okay. I don't even know what else. But like there were or like uh what was the other word? I don't know, whatever. But like that is the main one that I noticed because I went to the elevator 
and I like hit the wrong button for someone else, and then I said sorry. <laughs> and then I was like, where did that come from? <laughs> That's hilarious. Just, just don't watch Trailer Park Boys. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah 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 it's, uh, other shades of canadian so uh, um so in i know it's still like COVID times and everything but in brooklyn are is there like a polyglot scene or a, a meetup or or do, do you kind of interact with that community because oh, yeah. i know some language learners like that's not their thing like they're not as social like whereas we are but for you in brooklyn like is that something you seek out um, to like connect with other language learners or speakers? Uh, I feel like I would like to, but I haven't sought it out yet. I don't know. I feel like I'm still um, very wary of COVID things just yeah, because yeah. I do like visit my family a lot. And, you know, like my grandma lives with us and I just don't want anything right. to happen because even like vaccinated people can yeah yeah, yeah 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 so i've just been like mm, not yet no. okay. um but otherwise i'm definitely like interested eventually in like connecting with people locally because i don't know my whole experience with like finding people interested in languages has been like completely virtual and through the internet right like all the oh, friends i've made and the connections they've all been like through youtube or twitter pretty much <laughs> right. so it would be cool to finally like in real life see somebody yeah that's really interesting i think for all three of us it's been the exact opposite like we started with <laughs> like almost purely real life interactions and we've had to get used to like online interactions oh interesting mm -hmm. yeah. hmm. how did you like so for you guys was it through like different meetups that you first like hear of online and then you go to them and that's where you meet the people yeah well like that's actually how oh. the three of us got connected essentially yeah but then i guess oh, at least for me like i've always been like a little nerdier on the online stuff like following certain bloggers from back in the day like like benny lewis fluent in three months was a big thing um but this out here in western canada like until actually yeah I rec until i was at university where i met cody and then later connected with marcus like Mm -hmm. depending where you are there's not always like a local place to go hang out so that's where you, there is kind of refuge in the online community yeah. so yeah but like i know like our boy mark is here like he's 100 percent. well cody too doing that you like prefer like real life like oh, i only 100 for real life i only learned of this yeah. online community like a couple months ago <laughs> to be honest like i just wow. joined twitter for like the first time yeah like when the pandemic started and now, mm -hmm. now, um, at least here, like meetups are back. Like we have a, a pretty small tight group now that like we meet once a week for Spanish and I'm trying to find a group for French as well. Mm -hmm. Um, cause that was always my thing. And it's mm -hmm. cause I met these guys like in Calgary where, where we all lived before, there's like a really good polyglot community. So like once or twice a week, we would meet at a cafe or a bar, uh, it'd be like 40 people. And like, um, yeah. we would even have like these pub nights where you had like a table for each language. So you would like move around the tables and speak different languages. There was like a German table and a French table and a Spanish table. So, so much like, fun. I, That's I always so cool. loved that. Yeah, that was always like my thing um, or our thing, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and then the pandemic hit and then we tried doing like some online meetups and it kind of sucked. It wasn't really the same thing because yeah. like 40 people in like one uh, Zoom meeting doesn't really work. I mean, you can it, do breakout rooms, but... You can, that's yeah, like, that's kind of what you have to do. But yeah, you yeah, only really want to be, like, max... You only really want to be max four. I think that's pushing it. Like, Ian and I, we've been doing these Portuguese nights. Before, like, we were doing these Portuguese nights. Me and him were, yeah. like, speaking to, to each other over Zoom. Just me and him in Portuguese. Yeah. Which was... That worked really well. Yeah. Sometimes. But otherwise, yeah. it's not the same yeah. thing. Like, the, that, like the, the bigger group, like, you need to do that in real life, I feel like. For sure, because I, I think like only really one person can ever be talking at once. And if there's like too much time between, you know, everyone getting a chance, then it's yeah. like someone mm -hmm. inevitably gets left out and then it's yes. just not productive. So, yeah, I totally. agree. And I think and that's uh, that even translates to uh, 
I mean, it depends. Okay, I'm curious what about your language classroom experience because I even just took mm -hmm. I took a Allianz Frances class recently where I was one of ten people, I believe, mm -hmm. and you know, it was, the material was fine, interesting, and everything. We had the odd breakout rooms, but when you're just like a tenth of the class, like yeah, I do feel like you're that's all you get. <laughs> you get ten percent yeah. to speak, basically. So like, but for you. She said up until Japanese, like the classroom setting for you was always like, like really productive. Honestly. Yeah. I think it's because like, um, I am honestly very introverted and like, uh -huh. I don't do well generally in like a large group setting because I tend to get overwhelmed because I can't give like 100% of myself to everyone. That's just mm -hmm. like, you know. So mm -hmm. when I'm like in a big group setting, I tend to want to like cling to a single individual, <laughs> like that's my uh, best friend, and I follow go. them around. <laughs> and then I get very sad when I discover that they have other people that they want to talk to. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so like when I'm in a classroom setting, like I only really need to focus on like the teacher, you know, the other kids are there to not always have the intention on me as well mm -hmm. right. give me like right. a break from answering questions and like but still learn through like how they're answering to things uh -huh. what mistakes they're making how like you know like maybe i'm not ready to like uh, i don't know do the exercise answer maybe i'm like not totally sure didn't like super get it but then i hear everyone else like do this exercise back and forth to the teacher and i'm like ah got it and then I don't have to like go through, I don't know, the not embarrassment of not knowing, but like acknowledging and like admitting that like, oh, I didn't get that immediately. I don't know. It, I feel yeah, like all these yeah. like emotional things, they still do contribute to everything, which is, I don't know, important, honestly, for motivation and like confidence. So I don't know. I think that just helped me in a lot of ways and was very like productive for me right but yeah i think the other main thing though other than that was just like having an external force <laughs> to like make you do the things right um, okay like there is a set schedule you have to follow it if you don't you're gonna be like called out by the teacher why didn't you do the homework right why don't you know these words or like you get a bad grade on your test and then it's like, you know, stamped in your record and you're like, well, shit, right. why didn't I say Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. So it's like, it always gives you the kick in the butt that you need <laughs> yeah. constantly uh, to make it a habit as opposed to, because like, if I don't have that, then I tend to just miss one day and then another day and then another day and right. then I can't get back on. It's really yeah. hard to because there's nothing really forcing me. I can always just procrastinate. So yeah, right. I think that's why the classroom was very good for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey Cody, do you gotta take off here? Yeah, yeah. Sorry guys. No, 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 no worries. We'll uh Marks and I we'll keep chatting. It's hilarious. Okay, yeah. If you guys want to uh, keep going, then feel free. But I I have to go right now. Yeah, man. I know you got yeah. stuff to do. And so, yeah, so cool, nice dude. meeting you, Cody. Okay, yes, yeah, so yeah, it was nice care, meeting bud. you. Yeah, take sorry, care, I have to go early. No worries, dude. Okay, later. bye, guys. Bye, bye. So, okay, yeah, that's interesting. That external, because I feel like there's always that like give and take of like your internal motivations and drives and things, but then like if there is something external, and I find that's not just languages, that's a lot like kind of any skill acquisition or study yeah. in life i so. think that's like the main point of like personal trainers because you can find right. routine online but uh -huh. no one's going to make you do it yeah <laughs> You're exactly, paying right? for someone to force you to do it yeah, um, i don't I, for me personally though for me personally though like i don't feel like i need that at all like it's mm -hmm. at the point where like how i've organized my life is that i i automatically get like my main languages without really even trying like spanish because i try like i try to have like my base my language base and like us and my social life so mm -hmm. i have a bunch of friends 
with whom I only speak Spanish and like that's mm -hmm. how we hang out. Mm -hmm. Like I talk, I text them in Spanish. I talk to them on the phone in Spanish. We see each other. We speak Spanish. Right? So mm -hmm. it's like automatic. Some of my yeah. favorite podcasts, for example, that I listen to are in Spanish. Uh, I love reading the news, like various newspapers in Spanish that I do like on an almost on a daily basis. So it's like automatic, you know, and that's what I want to, what, I, that's the level I want to be at in like all my languages, ideally, but it's hard. Like mm -hmm. I try dabble in like Russian, Italian, but it's like, it's really hard for me to like get that sense. Like I have to like fall in love. Would a classroom help you in that sense? Or you just, you need that passion? <sighs> no, I don't, I can't do classrooms when it comes to that stuff. Okay, that's what I mean. Just, like it never worked for different. me. I possibly could, yeah, I possibly yeah. could, but then it's like the classroom is also like too slow for me. Like I, I want it, like I, I want to do it like every day. And like having one class and one more thing, like I hate, I never do grammar. I, I, I do not, I just don't, well, I do study grammar, but I do it like retro mm -hmm. actively, if you know what I mean? Like I learn it first intuitively and then I go back and, and like re look at the grammar and try mm -hmm. to understand like, okay, why does, why do you say it this way? And it makes a lot more sense that way. Instead of like learning the grammar before you, you uh, encounter the sentence structures or the language. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that's just my my approach and i've never i've never learned like uh, a hard language i've always dabbled in like the lowest hanging fruit like i like i um talked about on the ace podcast like i never tried like russian would be like the hardest one and like it, russian hit me hard <laughs> like <laughs> so that's freaking hard for me russian that's something different yeah. but otherwise i just dabble in like all the romance languages and and um german which are pretty um, yeah similarly like, like we talked about anchor languages right mm -hmm. so i just go off of my anchor languages and like pick the closest one mm -hmm. yeah so cool. blair with japanese do you feel this one's gonna take like quite a long time to to do like or like or, or are you happy with your pace or do you have a big ambition like to go to japan or, or like oh for some... sure yeah i've okay. been wanting to go to japan since like high school okay this is um, a long time coming yeah <laughs> but right. like see i didn't start like actually learning it until last year and even then like i don't even know how to say like oh i started here because it right. was like started did two weeks dropped off for a month started again a different way yeah, did yeah, a little yeah. bit. so i don't even know how long i've really been doing it but but yeah i guess my ultimate even know what my ultimate goal is like i'm uh -huh. this is the thing like i've watched a bunch of these like oh my polyglot goals for 20 yeah, yeah, yeah right videos and i'm uh -huh. like how do you even know what your goals are <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. like i couldn't even i don't know how to set those like productively because i've always had them kind of almost set for me through classes it's like okay by the end of this year you will be able to do this this and this and right. just do what we tell you and you will get there that's the curriculum like, yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, so okay. it's like doing that by myself is uh i i don't yeah. know because i have to still discover like what is my pace because i get really easily like discouraged i guess if i put too much on my plate and then I can't do all of it even if I did most of it I didn't do all of what I wanted to do and then I'm like damn right. it <laughs> didn't do all of it yeah. but then if I do too little then I want to keep going but then I burn myself out trying to do too much because right. once again I didn't set myself a limit so I'm like I'm very comfortable finding that this. <laughs> Goldilocks yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, guys, quick thing. I actually, I actually got to go too, really bad. Uh, no I'm going to let you guys finish up the chat. Sure, sure, sure. Um, but I, I really got to run real quick. But Blair, yeah. it was really nice chatting with you. And yeah, uh, let's do this again, eh? Yeah, for sure, eh? <laughs> hey, nice. Okay. Right. Merci, merci beaucoup. Ciao. All right. Oh, Later, Swago. All right. Um, cool, cool. Blair. And then there so, were two. Yes, then we were two, Cody and Marcus. <laughs> you say I outlasted them. That's the first time, actually. Like, it's like a last man standing, <laughs> the mm -hmm. Lingaholics. Um, okay, just a couple of quick things here, because thank you. have been an hour plus here um, mm -hmm. with us. So just in terms of uh, like your social media presence um, and YouTube presence, have you how have you found that in terms of like showcasing? Because you, you did admit, like you say, like how you're shy, but... How have you felt? Have you felt like 
come out of a shell at all like with this youtube social media presence or like have you, is the feedback from the community help motivated like what's that interaction like for you uh i wouldn't say that it's made me any less shy because like technically when making videos you are still by yourself right you know, you're just talking to a kid you're not actually talking in front of anyone it's like uh, okay you're still by yourself in a room so like i feel like that's why it might not seem that i'm shy because it's like oh like she's talking she's making videos on youtube you know yeah yeah um, right. but actually no um uh -huh. as far as like the twitter's uh twitter presence i also like honestly don't think i even tweet that much right yeah I yeah we kind of like say something when yeah i'm like i think like oh this is worth saying um, right right or it's just like something random that or cute that i want to share so totally. i don't know and i forgot what the rest of your question was, no but... no just yeah okay like so you felt it's been like a good energy from just being on social media and YouTube, yeah like with uh, the language community basically yeah yeah i think for me it's definitely been like pretty much only a positive experience but i feel like if i talked about some more of my opinions because okay. i feel like i've been pretty safe <laughs> there okay, are some people yeah, like yeah. like kevin or like some other people who just like yeah they will say whatever they think right and they, they like to rip. get into arguments it seems Right. But I like really shy. I, I'm like the kind of person who I'm like the Michael Jackson, the popcorn reading those, but okay, I will not engage. Right. You're not in the actual like <laughs> no. showdown of. Yeah. No, no. I, I play it like super safe because I am afraid of conflict and I can't deal with that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th I think that's why for me it's been like pretty positive. <laughs> cool. <laughs> no, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. Like yeah, that's the thing. It's, like, it's not like when you're on the present on those. Uh, networks that you have to be like in the weeds on everything or like just yeah having a fun press and like honestly that's all like kind of um because me and cody and marcus just always sharing videos and like hey mm -hmm. here's another language learner that we'd like to talk to so um yes yeah. no um so okay so for the <laughs> listener that wants to find you and not get into an argument or nothing just have some kind words and pleasantries so where can they where can they find you um if you, uh, if, you if can google promoting. my name <laughs> yeah okay yeah, that's which is start. valeria tarina v-a-l-e-r-i-a t-i-o-u-r-i-n-a so awesome. yeah that is my okay name. okay and one more nerd question for like so after mm -hmm. after japanese any particular uh language aspirations or have you thought that far ahead i have thought that far ahead I oh think, you have yeah yeah yeah. i at first i was like considering like oh maybe korean would be cute but then i was like uh -huh. mm, no okay i'm just gonna stop here because i can't maintain all of these and i would just really i've gotten to the point where i really just want to be like good in one or two uh, and like okay. i'm fine with being okay in the other ones that i've learned but i don't think i would want to like pick any other ones up right okay so it's i really think focused. like japanese is really the last one and it's one that i want to get to in like a pretty good level so, solid yeah. no yeah awesome awesome okay um all right folks that's gonna wrap up our episode here with uh valeria so thank you so much for uh joining us today um it's uh yeah been it was awesome when you accepted the invitation a while back so i was really happy uh, we can make it happen here today yeah. and uh um thank you and keep on keep on with the languages that just keep on rocking awesome. <laughs> keep on rocking yeah, yeah. thanks so much for inviting me on it's a yeah, pleasure for sure okay we will see you down the line for sure all right peace bye